Okay, so here's our general formula that relates the activity or the number of decays to uh, the number of molecules. Uh, this unit of decays per second is called a becquerel. BQ for becquerel. I think that's right, yeah. So I think that uh, in 1896, Becquerel was the first person who noticed radioactivity. So he gets the reward of having this unit named after him. That's right. Okay, so um, activity would be in Becquerels as a standard unit or decays per second. So this is a graph of what happens to N over time. What would the graph of A look like? If we were going to graph the, the radioactivity, what would that graph look like? I would say straight line, because uh, down here. Can I draw what it would look like? Like, um, just straight okay. line downward. Because now, isn't it because it's first? Notice that the activity is proportional to the number of nucleuses. That's what this equation really tells us, right? Yeah. Um, however many nucleuses we have, we're going to lose a set proportion of those in our activity, say 10% each time. So. Um, if the activity is proportional to the number of nucleuses, then the graph for the activity should look like the graph for oh, the nucleuses. So it should look same, basically yeah. the same. You wouldn't put it on the same graph because they have different units. Mm -hmm. But they would both look the same. You would start, uh, remember this is telling us how much decay we're having per second. Well, we're going to start with a lot of the radioactive nucleuses, so we're going to start with many decays per second. And then over time, we're going to have less and less of the nucleuses. In fact, over time, we're going to go. Um, the number of nucleuses is going to approach zero. When you have well, when you have almost no nucleuses left, you're going to have almost no decays. If there's almost no nucleuses left, well, how can they decay? So the graph for the activity would have the same shape as the graph for n. Okay. They are both going to be asymptotically going down towards zero. Because they are like um, the relationship is. Uh, is it? It's going to be the same because they're like uh, related. They're proportional. proportional. Because they're proportional. This is what an equation looks like to show that two things are directly okay. proportional to each other. When this decreases by 10%, this decreases by 10%. So the regular, the general shape looks the same. But also that should just be kind of common sense. Again, at the beginning you have the maximum number of nucleuses, so you'll have the maximum amount of radioactivity. And over time, you're going to have almost no nucleuses left. So you'll have almost no radioactivity left. Okay. All right. yeah. This is why when you have, of course, you know that radioactivity is dangerous, right? Because when things decay, they emit high energy particles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so people are very scared of radioactivity. Say if there's a nuclear power plant uh, accident that contaminates the environment with radioactive decay, um, people are very scared of that. But people usually say, well, eventually the radioactivity will disappear over time. Right? Eventually, um, it'll disappear. That's because eventually, almost all of the radioactive nucleuses are gone. So eventually, almost all of the radioactivity is gone. Um, but sometimes it takes a long time to get back to that safety level. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Suppose I was going to make a graph. This is a graph of the number of nucleuses. Mm -hmm. that are left. Suppose I was going to make a graph of the mass of the nucleuses that are left. If I made a graph of the mass of the nucleuses, what would that look like? Same. Would yeah. be because, it, uh, because mass decreases with time too by losing the... Um, so it would have the same shape. Yeah, it's That's the right. Same shape. Different actual, units, but the same shape. Because the mass is proportional to the number of nucleuses. <laughs> if you have less, so you're going to start with the maximum number maximum mass, and over time you're going to have less and less mass of the radioactive nucleuses left, because it's decayed. So a lot of these things are, um, have similar paths to each other.
<clears throat> if something is very radioactive, would that mean it has a big K or a small K when you're ready? Um, the decay constant, do you mean? Yeah. Uh, I would say it's big. Yeah, because this tells us what percent is decaying per second. If something's very radioactive, a lot of it decays each second. What about if it was completely stable? If it was completely stable, what would K be? Uh, K will be small, small or kind of equilibrium, you know. Like. So if it was completely stable, what would, the, what would be the numerical value for K? Uh, zero. Yeah, that would be 0% decay per second. If something was completely stable, then none of it would be decaying. Okay. So we won't have many Ks of zero in this section. So the bigger K is, the more radioactive the substance is, perhaps okay. the more dangerous it is. Or that's one thing that would influence how dangerous it is. Next, we can talk about the concept of half-life. Do you remember hearing about half-life in class? What, would be, what, what does the half-life tell you about uh, a, a type of nucleus? It's radioactive and the way it decays, if I understand. So suppose the half-life is half -life. five days. If the half-life is five days, what does that tell you precisely about that nucleus? that it decays like um, like in five days. It's um, the K over five days, I would say, like constant, no? the constant. Let's try to be more precise. What this tells us is that if you wait five days, half of the nucleuses will have decayed. Okay. And if you wait another five days, another half of the nucleuses will decay. And if you wait another five days, another half of the nucleuses will decay. It tells us that every five days, half of the nucleuses okay. have decayed which means that you only um, half of what you started with is left. <clears throat> okay. So that's a very important concept to be comfortable with for this section, half-life. So how would that affect our graph? Let's say I have a substance, so I just made up this number of five days, mm -hmm. but let's say that we have a nucleus that has a half-life of five days. Well, what, what, where would I be on this graph after five days then? Well, if I started here, half, half of the nucleus is gone would be about here? Yes. All right? Which would mean that this must five be five days. days. After five days, half of them are left. And half of them are gone. Okay. All right. Now, how about after another half-life? Uh, after yeah. another half-life, we so would half, be, yeah, exactly. this is about half of this. Mm -hmm. So then this number here would be what? 10 days. Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't really trying, but the, I don't know. This seems a little bit too long here. I didn't quite draw the graph exactly yeah, but right. It makes like But um, the, this, this distance should be the same as this distance if I had drawn the graph better. OK. OK, and we just go like half is going to be. After half another half life, we would be here. And I'll have to adjust the graph to look better there. It's going to be uh, 15 days. 15 days. Now you can see why we couldn't draw a straight line. This wouldn't work for the straight line. It, has to, it only works with a curve that has less and less slope. My curve doesn't look the way it's supposed to here, but it looks something like this. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, so this helps us to see the idea of half-life and why this has to be a curve and not a straight line. Also, after five days, we would have half as much radioactivity as before, and we would have half as much mass as before as well because radioactivity and mass are proportional to the number of nucleuses. So however the nucleuses are, number of nucleuses are behaving, the same will happen to the radioactivity and the mass. Mm -hmm. So we have to talk about this because you might see a problem that asks you about number of nucleuses, radioactivity, or mass. And they're all basically solved the same way because they're all proportional to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's the idea of half-life. So this is the symbol for half-life. I think this makes sense now. What, what are the units for half-life? Well, the standard units would be seconds, because that's the SI unit for time. But actually, a lot of the time, we use different units that are more convenient. Here, I use days. Okay. Um, but this is a time, so we use lowercase t, which is the standard scientific symbol for time. And the subscript is 1 half. And that makes sense, because this is the half-life. So this is not an exponent. It's just a label for a subscript. 